So you've asked me what's the challenge around parity of esteem. What is it for NHS England and what are we going to do about it? Okay. So I think the big challenges for parity of esteem are first of all changing the culture of health and social care. We have tended as a country, for whatever reasons, a whole series of reasons, to separate asking people about their physical health and asking them about their mental health. We haven't brought it together. We don't treat the person, we treat a part of the person. So one of the things that we've got to do in this country that I would love to see happen is that every time anybody goes for a consultation, either with a GP, um, in an acute trust, somebody with a long-term physical condition, somebody in mental health, they get asked equally about their physical and their mental health. Simple, basic, good clinical practice. Not very time consuming, but it really makes such a difference. So that would be the first thing. The second thing we have to think about a lot in NHS England is, so what can we uniquely as a commissioning organisation do? What is it that we really could do that would drive transformational change? And the sorts of thinking that people have around that is, first of all, supporting our CCGs with training in mental health commissioning. The fantastic news is we have a programme which means that by the end of April 2014 we will have 211 CCGs in this, in this country, each with a mental health lead and each having been taken and supported with a commissioning leadership development programme. Uh, the second thing we're doing is we're helping every CCG in the country who's commissioning and NHS England as direct commissioners for every area to understand the scale of the problem. So how many people do we think there is with a particular mental health problem? How many are accessing treatment at the moment? What's happening where people don't access treatment? And what we know is that where people aren't given the right assessment and the right treatment early on, they're ending up going in and out of A&Es, they're going end up admitted into hospital, very long length of stay, they're ending up in very restrictive care, high impact, high cost placement. We in NHS England want to, with partners, um, create kind of economic remodelling tools. So we want to be able to say to people, if this is your current model of care and this is how much it's costing you, and it's not delivering very good outcomes. If you were to invest your money differently, what would you be able to achieve that would be much better in terms of people's health outcomes, their personal outcomes, the outcomes for their community, and much better economically. So that's, one of, that's another set of tools that we want to, to do for people. And we want to make sure that when we commission services, our commissioning support tools, you don't commission only for the body and not the mind. So if I give you an example, my fellow national clinical directors who are wonderful, so um, Mr. Diabetes, Mr. Trauma, Intensive Care, A&E, you wouldn't, for example, commission a trauma unit that just did the physical, the surgical bit, and you wouldn't commission it without the anaesthetics. Now, if people have trauma, if people are subject to trauma, of course it has major psychological impact. So we want to be able to go forward that whatever service is commissioned, the psychological part of that service is commissioned at the same time and in a great integrated way as the physical health part of the service. When I took on the job as National Clinical Director for Mental Health, I expected it to be tough. What I didn't expect was to find so much stunning excellence wherever I go. So, you know, I went to an organisation a couple of weeks back, small trust, and I threw out a challenge to them saying, if, you, if there's anything you're proud of, if there's anything that you think is good, you have a duty to kind of write it up and let the world know. So they had called on all their staff and their organisation and said, We'd, if any team in this organisation feels proud of what they do, the service they offer, the outcomes they're achieving, we'd like you to develop, have a stall, a good practice stall. And the only criteria is that you must bring along and it must be co-designed with a service user who's been in your service who thinks it was good. And when they started, they hired a small hall and then more applications came in, so they hired a big hall. And then more applications came in, so they had two halls. And I went there one entire, it was almost a whole day. And you know when you've been to an art gallery and you've just seen so many wonderful rooms that your head is just kind of buzzing? That's what it was like. There was, you know, early inter people, early intervention psychosis service. There were service users there talking with 
the people who were providing the service about how great their service was, how they needed to tweak it this way, now they wanted to move into permanent employment. Um, there was another service where they were getting young children and young people to be able to say how good was this service for me. Really creative co-designed playing cards, badges, just kind of ways of monitoring that service. Um, that, that kind of thing is happening everywhere. Another GP practice I went to, very deprived area, right in the middle of Swindon. And there in the GP practice they were running what they call living well after stroke courses. Living well with chronic pain courses. So the whole translation was saying to people who've got long-term physical conditions, we're going to help you, educate you, have a course, do some training in how to live with a condition you've got but maximise your life. So they didn't call it this as a psychological therapy service. This was just in a GP practice, a group of 12 people sharing experiences, being guided through um, psychological therapies, mentalisation, as well as physical health rehabilitation. And there were tears streaming down people's eyes saying, you know, I just felt so, my life changed so much when I had a stroke. I came, and six people said, you know, we come to this actually feeling very depressed and almost suicidal. 12 weeks later, with this kind of program, the difference it has made to us and our families in being able to cope with this and understanding how to manage it ourselves, just really different. So that's the sort of innovation that is happening everywhere. Big, 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 big problem is we're not sharing it. That's the something about our British culture. I, we need to get pride of, we need, we need to get the language out there to people. Because I think if we can do that, I truly believe there's nobody comes into the mental health field. I think most of us don't come into healthcare these days because you, you kind of want to do nothing. You come to work because you want to make a difference. And we've somehow got to make it easier to help people share that learning.